Lifeboats save lives. When all else fails, the lifeboat will get you to safety. Except that occasionally, through poor design, bad maintenance, lack of training, lack of familiarity with equipment, communication failure, or simply operator error, lifeboat drills have actually taken lives or caused serious injury. As a professional mariner, you know that any lifting operation has its hazards, especially if you're launching or recovering a heavy lifeboat. Let's see what actually happened there. The onload release mechanism failed because the cables controlling the hook release weren't adjusted properly, so the lifeboat was free to fall into the sea. The crew did everything correctly. The lifeboat was actually being recovered and luckily there was no one on board the lifeboat. If there had been, there is a high chance they would have been badly injured. But all too often incidents like this occur during lifeboat drills and seafarers are killed or seriously injured. The cause is operator error. And that could mean poor maintenance, insufficient training, or that someone simply hadn't read the instruction manual. It's been claimed that as many as 16% of the seamen who have been killed on merchant ships died during lifeboat drills, and 80% of the fatalities are claimed to have been due to the hook release mechanism. But you mustn't let that prevent you from taking part in essential lifeboat drills. In fact, exactly the opposite is true. These drills are intended to ensure that your whole crew are familiar with the life-saving systems on your ship. So, do you understand how to use those life-saving systems? Do you have experience of operating them so you can use them as safely and professionally as possible? And do you feel confident that you can operate them and not just for drills? And as we've already seen, all too clearly, you also need to make sure the systems are in working order and ready to use in an emergency. Putting safety right at the top of your to-do list is vital. Then, if the worst does happen, you will be prepared for it. There's one more thing you need to think about. Seafarers often change ships and are therefore not familiar with lifeboats on their present ship. There are some 75 different designs for the onload release mechanism, so it's vital that you know how the systems on your ship work. Are you sure? Your life might depend on what you do about that. So what are the most important things you need to know? Firstly, whatever job you have on board a ship, anything that threatens the safety of that vessel could put you in the position of having to know how to operate a lifeboat. Your STCW certification will have trained you to understand basic seamanship, but launching and skippering a lifeboat requires specific understanding which you'll need to refresh for every ship you sail in. And that applies to brand new ships as much as older ones. The ship was newly built in Japan. The use of the lifeboats had been demonstrated to the chief officer and third officer at the shipyard. Several days later, when the ship was in passage to Australia, there was a loud crash and the port lifeboat had fallen to the sea and was floating upside down. The watch officer realised that the chief engineer and first engineer were on board. The chief officer leapt into the sea to try to save them, and he managed to board the upturned lifeboat. Tragically, he was washed off and never found. The two engineers also died as a result of the incident. They had apparently been trying to start the engine of the lifeboat, but had inadvertently operated the onload release mechanism in error even though the release mechanism had included a safety interlock. OK, so lifeboat drills are a bit like aircraft safety announcements. We've heard them all before. But as we've seen, even experienced guys can make mistakes. Also, systems are different on almost every vessel. So it is essential that when the master orders a lifeboat drill, you pay attention and you learn from it as much as you can. Always read the instruction manual for the lifeboat system on your ship. And, as we know, there are many different versions. 
one of the main causes for injuries is poor maintenance. Your ship should have a process to do this in accordance with SOLAS Regulation Chapter 3. This is an inspection list which should be carried out weekly and monthly under the direct supervision of a senior ship's officer. Your ship should have procedures for doing this. The IMO also specifies comprehensive maintenance requirements for lifeboats, davits, release mechanisms and other life-saving equipment. Maintenance of lifeboats should be carried out to these IMO requirements. There are two completely different lifeboat systems which may be fitted to your ship. Each of these types of lifeboat has launch and release procedures and mechanisms which you must understand. Although there may be differences on each ship, misuse of the lifeboat launch system is the single most common cause of death and injury. This is a freefall lifeboat deployed from a ramp or gantry. Released with crew members inside, it plunges bow first into the sea. This system enables crew to be evacuated quickly from the ship in the event of a fire or emergency. Freefall lifeboats are fitted to many cargo ships and bulk carriers. Where permitted by SOLAS, simulated launching of freefall lifeboats should be carried out in accordance with current guidelines. It's important that any restraining devices used for simulated launches are removed once the drill is completed. The most common type of lifeboat is launched from davits at the edge of the deck. The launching system consists of two boat davits and a frame, falls, suspension blocks and suspension links. Release hooks which are securely fixed to the stem or frame of the lifeboat, gripes or lashing devices, and a boat winch with reduction gears, handbrake and centrifugal brake. The lifeboat is suspended by the falls, suspension blocks and links and either offload release hooks or onload release hooks attached to the lifeboat. It is essential that you understand how onload release hooks function. Let's have a closer look at the two types of release hooks used for lifeboats. If the lifeboat is fitted with offload release hooks, they can only be released when the lifeboat reaches sea level and tension in the falls is removed. Fore and aft falls can then simply be removed from the hooks, but only when the lifeboat is floating. This system is not fitted to ships constructed after 1986. Current IMO regulations require the use of onload release hooks, which can be released from inside the lifeboats. The purpose of the system is to enable both falls to be released if necessary, particularly if the lifeboat has been lowered unevenly with, say, the aft of the lifeboat floated while the fore is still suspended. But that also means they can release the lifeboat while it is still hanging from the falls and being lowered to sea level. That could mean it being inadvertently released from deck level into the sea although that is not the intention and doing so will risk severe injury to those in the lifeboat as we saw in the incident. Dropping a lifeboat even a short distance can result in serious injuries. There are no routine circumstances in which onload release hooks should be released while the lifeboat is still at height. Because so many seafarers have suffered injuries in this way, it's become common practice to use fall preventer devices or FPDs. One of my jobs is investigating accidents and two years ago I investigated one in which three seamen died due to a premature release of this onload release gear. We have a thing we call an FPD and it can take two forms. It can be a sling, which is a resilient sling made of nylon or, or polyester, which bypasses the hook, or it can be a pin which goes through the hook. Uh, many manufacturers are now thinking in terms of providing such pins, some already have done it, in which case that freezes the action of the hook. But for those hooks which do not have the pin, we have to have an alternative load path, which is, in this case, the resilient sling.
Should the onload release mechanism fail, the sling or safety strop will bear the load of the lifeboat. Before using FPDs, the ship operator and the relevant authorities should be consulted for approval. Do not use hanging off pendants in place of FPDs. What should you do for your own safety? Before the drill begins, you and everyone in the whole area of the drill must don a life jacket. This applies not just if you're going to enter the lifeboat, it may be necessary for anyone in the area to become involved and enter the water. You should be wearing the following PPE. A boiler suit, a safety hat, safety goggles, which you may carry, gloves, safety shoes. And for the lifeboat drill, in addition to your life jacket, you should also have an immersion suit where required. They are very warm, so you may carry it. In emergency, additional warm clothing will also be required. Launching the lifeboat means swinging it out and lowering it. It can be controlled both from the ship's deck and from inside the lifeboat. The speed at which the lifeboat is lowered can also be controlled from the deck or inside the lifeboat. Never enter the lifeboat without checking that the release hooks are fully closed and that fall preventer devices are in place if they're used on your ship. Be clear about who will operate the release hooks in your drill and who will coordinate the safety of that order. You must satisfy yourself that the suspension link retaining gate on each release hook is in contact with its stop. The lifeboat itself has normal controls for steering and navigation. However, there is one control that you must be very clear about, the release handle. Check that the release handle is in the closed and locked position and that the safety pin is installed. It is this release handle that was operated in error in our real-life example, resulting in the lifeboat plunging down to the sea. This has occurred in many incidents that have resulted in very serious injuries or fatalities. Please learn how to identify this handle. It could look similar to a car handbrake or throttle. Do not operate the release handle unless the drill coordinator has ordered it. By now it will be clear to you that communication is vitally important when lifeboats are launched. Before the drill starts, check that all radios are in full working order. Are you clear who is acting as coordinator for the drill? Let's look at an example of how you will launch and operate a lifeboat. It may not be the same as that on your ship, but you can find details of life-saving equipment and procedures for holding safe drills in your company's ship's safety management system. It is your responsibility to be familiar with how the lifeboats on your particular ship operate. Make sure you've looked at the operating manual and crucially that you know all the controls, how they operate and what they do. Throughout the drill, be alert for potentially dangerous situations and bring them to the attention of the coordinating officer. You should confirm that the permanent painter is connected to the painter release device on the lifeboat. It should be as far forward as practicable. Check that no gripe or lashing is tangled around the fore and aft hooks. It is recommended that the lifeboat first be lowered and recovered without any crew on board. Never enter a lifeboat without checking that the release hooks are fully closed and that any fall preventer devices are in place. Open the lifeboat boarding door and board the lifeboat on the instructions of the coordinator. Close the hatch and check that it's secure before launching. The remote control wire should be drawn into the lifeboat. And here's a warning, under no circumstances wrap the wire around your fingers, hand or wrist. A second officer was seriously injured when the lifeboat lowered at full speed after they had wrapped coils of wire around their hand. They lost four fingers. Check that the bottom plug of the lifeboat is fitted and tight.
This allows rain to drain from the lifeboat, but clearly must be in place when the lifeboat puts to sea. The coxswain will now turn on the power supply and open the fuel oil valve. Fasten all seat belts. If seat belts are not fastened, serious injury or death may occur whether or not the lifeboat drops to sea level. Seating positions should be arranged to make sure the lifeboat maintains a good trim. Start the engine. The winch remote control wire can be pulled down gently and slowly as the lifeboat is swung out. Do not operate the winch too fast. It's very easy to set the boat swinging or shaking. And once sideways movement gets established at sea, it's very hazardous to the crew in the lifeboat. The onload release hooks should never be released above water level. They should only be released upon confirmation from the coordinating officer that the lifeboat is as close as possible to being waterborne. Once the lifeboat is at sea level or about a metre above it, you can remove the FPDs. Once the lifeboat is afloat, then you can release the hooks. It's not always easy to know from inside the lifeboat how far it has been lowered or how high it is above water level.